From the 1st of July, there have been few changes and updates with immigration law. It's with great pleasure I like to introduce Don Susanta Kadugampala in our studios to talk about the updates and the changes with immigration law. Good morning and welcome to our program. Good morning, Derek. I born. I born. So, on the first of all, will you be able to tell our viewers the new updates and the changes with immigration law? Yes, the first of July is the start of the new financial year. The good news is that in the new financial year, the government has announced intake of 190,000 places for non-humanitarian migration program. In that, 128,000 places for skill migration program. That's a great news. Means that the Australia is going to attract 190,000 new people mm. in this financial year. Okay. And there are 128,000 places for new skilled people wanted to come to Australia. Opportunities for your friends and relatives. And also, the expected changes, major changes to skill occupation list hasn't come in because there were speculations that accountants will be removed from the list. Okay. It hasn't happened. So we are fortunate that the skill occupation list is pretty much the same before as before 1 July 2015. And uh, the only change is that uh, certain occupations such as urban and regional planner has been removed. And uh, the government is putting more resources to monitor 457 temporary visa compliance for businesses to operate and comply with the Australian laws, other than that there aren't major changes. So the government's focus is to promote skill migration and business migration and investments to stabilize and grow the Australian economy. Are there any changes with citizenship laws? Yes, uh, it, it's a recent change. The government's priority is protect the national security in the country. And therefore, if someone is a dual citizen, an Australian citizen, engaged in any terrorism activity, and also engaged in uh, activity that threatens the Australian national security, yeah. The government, the Australian Immigration Minister, has the discretion to cancel their citizenship. As a result of that, DFAT can cancel their Australian passport and that will prevent them to return to Australia. So this is the new trend of the government to prioritise the national security issue and therefore cancel certain citizenships. So we receive lots of inquiries, people who hold dual citizenships, Will that affect us? Mm -hmm. Certainly, uh, our community is not uh, involved in terrorism activity, and uh, therefore, it is not uh, something uh, that affects a usual citizen. But it's a rare circumstances, certain groups that uh, is engaged in terrorism activities, even overseas, Australia, uh, have problem with their citizenship under these new rules. That's the government's priority at the moment. So, Sunday, is there any disadvantages having dual citizenship? Absolutely no. Because dual citizens are affected by these new laws if they are engaged in any terrorist activities. Only for people who intend to or will be engaged in terrorist activities. And uh, it is a message for the young Australians that not to be engaged in any terrorist activities. And also their parents. And uh, if you are not, then you're fine. Dual citizenship is something that you should enjoy if you want to access your country in having another citizenship. And uh, so this has no connections whatsoever if you are not a terrorist. And these similar laws have been introduced in Canada recently. Okay. And the difference between the Canadian laws and Australian laws the Canadian laws says the decision by the minister cannot be challenged in courts of law. The Australian law has been passed uh, as a bipartisan agreement between both parties and uh, any decision by the minister can be challenged at the courts. So therefore, the people's liberty has not been taken away by passing yes, such a law. But this is to protect Australia, protect the national interest, I think as public. We all should agree and support uh, such a change 
to protect the security of this country. Recently, I read something about religious workers. Is there any changes in that also? Yes. Uh, the, this is very much connected to the same issue because there are some re religious organizations that has created uh, certain political issues in Australia. Therefore, the government is restricting giving permanent residence visas to ministers of religion, religious workers. There are two options that the religious workers can come in that will affect the Buddhist priest or the Hindu priest or the Muslim priest uh, or, or the Christian or Catholic priest and uh, they can obtain a temporary visa to reside here for 12 months or 2 years or 4 years and depend on uh, the nomination by the religious organization. But eventually they have the right to apply for Australian permanent residence to stay here permanently. But that has been changed and religious organizations are unable to sponsor a minister or religious worker for direct permanent residence under the new rules. And to do that, in order to do that, the industry or the religious organizations need to enter into a labor agreement with the immigration minister. It means that all the religious workers or ministers of religion who wanted to obtain permanent residence need to be approved by the immigration minister personally. So this is a significant change that will make uh, so much difficult for many religious organizations to achieve permanent residence for the religious workers. That's a big change came in 1 July 2015. Thank you, Susanta. It's been uh, a pleasure having you in our studios and giving that valuable information to our viewers. And let me thank you once again. Thank you very much, Derek. Thank you very much to Sri Lanka Morning Show, Aibuan. Aibuan.